How are you feeling? What are your thoughts? You know, a little surprised, I guess. I mean, you know, it's um, A1 kind of went down, and, uh, you know, Tater got a good, um, had a mistake here before the triple jump, and, you know, kind of, it, you know, he hit the pipe, and, you know, then he inadvertently kind of hit Spencer there, and Spencer kind of lost it into the, the jumps. Then it ended up being a battle. He ended up getting, a you know, kind of a, I'm not going to say an easy win, but he, he got away with that issue there. Um, and then he was back in the lead and, you know, it just kind of, he checked out, you know, he obviously had the speed, he had enough consistency and he actually, in a rare situation, he had enough, um, enough speed where he can actually make a mistake and come back from it. I mean, he had this one at the beginning, he had the one in the 180 on the right corner back there. And in that back corner, the marshal almost didn't really see him at first. And he actually had to get marshaled there and uh, let the, the, the pack, you know, kind of bunch up on him. And he, he, he still held his composure and, and won the first main. So that, to me, that was the one that did it, uh, you know, um, because I think his closest competitor was obviously Spencer. Uh, they, you know, whatever happened there on the first lap, I think it kind of it kind of ruined the momentum, I think, a little bit for Spencer and then Tater getting the win it gets you pumped up so um, and then he came back in A2 put in uh, the best drive uh, you know probably of his racing career you know and that's what you have to do in these moments uh, he didn't you know didn't make any uh, large mistakes uh, Spencer couldn't catch him you know he couldn't uh, Spencer stayed right there the whole time but just couldn't put enough of a run on him to, to get past him and you know he wrapped it up in two which is the way he wanted to do it if you're him. So a TQ and win for, for Tater. I mean, unbelievable weekend. Uh, coming out party, uh, 16 years old. I don't know, you know, he's never won a, a modified uh, buggy race, to my knowledge, <clears throat> nationals, anything like that. So sometimes things just come together for you. And at the right moment, it came together for him as it did for Spencer, you know, back in Japan in 2015. And um, Ryan Cavallari won his first Worlds at 16. Masami at 17. I mean, you could go on and on with the drivers getting it done at a, at a relatively young age. And, uh, you know, Ungaro, I think he was pretty young in, um, when we were in Australia when he won there. So obviously something comes together for you as a driver when you get in that age range. There's like the perfect combination of, you know, sort of innocence and, and your ability to uh, have the right reflexes and maybe a little bit of um, you don't think too much about what could happen or, you know, doing something wrong. You don't really have anything to lose um, because people don't expect it from you. It's hard to win when people expect it from you over and over. So, um, <clears throat> you know, and I think there was a little bit of pressure here this weekend. And um, for everybody, there was some pressure on the line. And, and uh, you know, s some guys got it figured out and responded well. Others didn't. And, and it didn't really, you know, turn out the way that they wanted to, which... Um, as how racing goes. So, yeah, Spencer then went in the A3. He wrapped it up in the in the third main. I mean, it looked kind of easy for him in the third main, you know, after, uh, he, you know, he gets the number one spot once Tater's out. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a... Usually what happens when you win these races is it changes your RC career a little bit. Obviously, you become a world champion. People um, are forced to step up for you a little bit more than normal. And uh, <clears throat> you have a little bit of negotiating power. Uh, you know, when you win these kind of races, it happened to Spencer, Cavalier, all these guys uh, who kind of deliver on the, on the big one because everybody likes to be a part of it. And uh, it'll probably change his uh, RC career a little bit. And But it, it's important to stay focused. You know, uh, you can't just win your one and, you know, go goof off. You know, you got to – now it's, it becomes more of an expectation. So you get your new deals, your contracts, whatever the case may be. Now you got to come back and more focused and, and, and put it all together where you're a true professional. And um, that's where these other guys are at, the you know the Mayfields, the Spencers, the Cavalieri's. They've had the, the big pressure over the years, and uh, they've delivered. You know, now they're, they're pros, and they have to act like pros. But, you know, they, they get um, rewarded for their performance. And uh, so that's where he's at now. He's got a... Um, he becomes a, a more of a true professional. Looking forward to the J Concept Circuit. The world's now is done. What's next for you and your team? Well, you know, we got two weeks, and we're going to be at Hoosier RC in uh, 
is it New Albany, Indiana, I think is what it is. And uh, so we'll be there at Hoosier, uh, massive track, a sealed surface. Uh, it was our largest event last year uh, on, the, on the whole circuit, I guess. We had uh, over 400 entries there last year, I believe. And uh, they're prepping, uh, you know, they've been getting, getting the word out there getting racers signed up and then I think now that we're finished with this you know there'll probably be three four five days where everyone kind of takes a breath and then it'll be like okay what's the next one to go to so I think that's what we're going to see next is we're going to see um, everyone kind of gear up for that and uh, that, that that's a that's a big race on our calendar so um, you know we'll have a carpet race after that in Minnesota in uh, October but so I think that's the that's kind of the, the build up right now.